Now, the Independence National Electoral Commission, INEC, has extended the deadline for the collection of permanent voter cards to February the 5th, 2023. INEC early extended the deadline for the collection of PVCs, but a national commissioner with the electoral umpire, that's Festus Okoye, said the time frame has been pushed forward by one week. He confirmed the move followed a meeting of INEC's resident electoral commissioners, also known as Rex. Now, for this conversation, we're now being joined by a Edo State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Obo Efanga. Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, of course, um, there have been numerous reactions based on this extension of PVCs, but I think one of the, mo the highlights, the things that stands out, is the issue of trust when it comes to the electoral body and the electorate. Some CSOs have confirmed various cases where they suggest that this is a deliberate disenfranchisement of the electorate by the electoral body. I'd just like to know your take on that. That sounds strange to say that uh, because we've extended the time to collect the cards, that that, is, uh, that amounts to a, dis a, a deliberate disenfranchisement. I'm sorry, just for clarification, that... I'm, I'm, okay. um, I probably didn't didn't drive that point home. It's not just that in isolation, not just the extension, okay. but how the whole PVC collection process has gone on. For instance, there have yeah. been reports that some people will go there and they'll tell them, oh, your PVC is not available now. You can come after the election to collect it. We've seen cases like that. So I should have probably clarified, and I'm clarifying right now, about the whole process of the PVC collection, not just the extension. Oh, OK. OK, so let's look at uh, the process. We had a period where people had to come and register as voters. And um, there was also a deadline for that. And people registered and then we produced the cards. We processed and produced the cards. The cards have been available, a lot of people. And this is the narrative that we need to also take note of, that a lot more people cards than those who haven't collected their cards, who have not collected the cards. And we should interrogate why some people have not co collected their cards. There are people who had registered for now, and in 2021, 2022 registration period, some of them came back to register again, even though they had previously registered. They had different reasons for that. Some they may have lost their cards and did not take advantage of the process of requesting a new card when they had lost their cards or maybe something changed about the information their name or where they lived uh, where they intended to vote there were many people who rather than ask us to update their information or do a transfer attempted to register some actually deliberately attempted to register more than once for those kind of people they don't have any new cards so we've seen a lot of people who said they registered during that period they hoping that the cards would be available and they've come and they've discovered that they, they don't have cards because we had, uh, uh, they are part of those that we nulled for attempt at multiple registration. Now, for those who are legitimately registered and their cards are available, they have been picking them up. There are a few instances, there are a few cases where the cards may not have been printed for some reason. And as many of those cases that we found at the of them coming to collect, we created a portal for these uh, uh, officials that attended to them to make a request to headquarters for those cards to be printed. And so in the last few weeks, a lot more have been coming in. In my state, for instance, last week we got um, a tranche of cards, more than 500 uh, of those cards and um, over the weekend that tranche and we are sorting that to send to the local government offices for people to collect there is no way i will deliberately refuse people who have registered and voters cards have been produced for them and will deliberately deny the opportunity to pick up their cards
give us uh, more of that insight. I just want to share the statistic by the research consultancy SBM, which states that only 30% of registrants, the legitimate ones, as you've, as you've pointed out, uh, get their PVCs on their first try. Now, up, other than the portal that you've mentioned that has been cr uh, created for INEC itself to make a request for cards and so forth, what other measures has INEC put in place to ensure that for this duration of this extension period that the process of picking up PVCs can be more seamless uh, because these statistics are not encouraging when we look at 30% of registrants saying that they have to come multiple times. Well, I, I, I don't know uh, the veracity of these statistics, but I also have my records of people who registered during this period, how many of those cards have been uh, sent to us and how many of those cards have been picked up. So, for instance, in the Doe State, where I'm the resident electoral commissioner, I can tell you for the new registrants, that is people who registered between 2021 and 2022, we had cards produced for 289,931. And of that number, as at the last time we took these figures, that's about a week ago, more than 190,000 of those had collected their cards, leaving a, a, a balance of 99,000. Now for the transfer cards, we had 129,000 plus who did the transfer and total number collected so far is about 86,000, leaving a balance of about 41,000 that have not been collected. Now, if you also know, for some of the people who have registered during this period or did transfers, they may not be living in the states. So anybody who wants to vote in a do state, for instance, could have registered anywhere and said he wants to vote in a do state and the cards are available, the person may not have come in yet to pick up the card. We also need to know that there have been a lot of uh, migration of people out of the country in the last one year. Even the, uh, the uh, Minister of the uh, uh, Interior admitted that. So some of these cards that are uncollected in the figures I've read to you, maybe of people who may not be in the country to collect those cards. Oh, thank you for that for that insight. Of course, there are different factors that could be in play for why, you know, some of the electorate have not collected their permanent voter cards. But we understand, for instance, that the Lagos International Trade Fair could embark on a no PVC, no entry for traders and customers. That, that's as a measure to ensure that people obtain their cards. Do you encourage gestures like this or do you see it as slightly coercive? No, no, I, I, this isn't right. It is, the, it is for an individual to decide whether or not the person wants to participate in an election. So I don't think it is right to punish people or deny people their rights to other things simply because they have refused or they have failed or uh, to collect their cards or for some reason they don't have a voter's card. It is part of a, a democratic choice to decide or not to vote in an election or to register or not to register. So why we will encourage people to register and to collect their cards and to vote, we will uh, uh, speak against any effort that, uh, uh, um, that goes against the fundamental rights of people to their choices. So I don't think it is right to deny somebody an access to any other facility service simply because the person has by his, uh, himself or herself decided that doesn't want to participate uh, in the process of election. Uh, now, sir, please, could you kindly uh, elaborate for us? What are some of the things that INEC has done to ease the process? Because uh, when you read social media, when you speak to people, the biggest issue is not necessarily ending up with the PVC in your hand. People are collecting it. However, people have said they have to be resilient. People have said that they have gone through all manner of, uh, in many cases, some people are even saying that they feel that there's a degree of voter suppression and segregation that's happening in how the selection of the people who are allowed to collect their PVCs are. How is INEC going to address this, this very dominant issue uh, during this extension period? Okay, thank you very much. Um, you know that uh, I sit in one seat and um, I will only be able to speak authoritatively about uh, PVC collection in a do state, even though I also know a bit of what is happening in other states because I, I know people who are there. And I've also got feedback from uh, friends 
in different states who have also even put it on social media how seamless it was for them to collect their cards. But I know that, uh, like I keep telling people, if you had 10 persons to collect a card on a given day and um, eight of them collected the cards, you're unlikely to hear those ones uh, say they have collected their cards. But it's the two persons who didn't collect their cards who are going to shout the more. And so it would seem on social media that more people have not collected their cards than more people than those who have collected. But like I said, the statistics show the other way. Yes, so um, what is INEC doing to ensure a seamless process? When we started, the collection was done at the local government offices of INEC. Then at a point for uh, two weeks and eventually three weeks, this was moved to the world level where it was easier for people to collect and then after then it has moved back to the local government area level because by the time we went to the ward a significant number of people are collected so